Laura's Gift by Anne Marie O'Brien, Chapter 8, The Bet. Just as I bundled up in my sheepskin coat and fur hat, eager to be reunited with the dogs, I heard scratching at the studio door. When I opened it, Zar bounded inside, circled me, and then leaned against my legs, looking up at me with happy eyes. I got down and hugged my arms around him, stroking and petting him like it was the first time I ever saw a dog. I ran my fingers through his curls and checked the wound on his neck, and just like Alexander had said, it had healed. Zar's coming is a sign, Mama said. The thought gave me strength. Davai, we must hurry and check on Zola, I said to him. We raced outside through the deep snow in the direction of the kennel, past the wooden chapel and its bell tower. When we reached the kennel, we sped past the, stall, the stalls lined with lounging borzoi. I found Zola tucked in the corner of the birthing stall where I had left her, quietly resting on a bed of straw. Zar bounded over to her and nibbled gently on her ears along and along her neck. She rolled in closer to him and grunted. Just as I was settled next to Zola, a slight headache formed, and then Papa barged into the birthing area. I thought I saw you come in here. You should be helping your mama. She told me I could visit the dogs. I saw panic on Papa's face. Don't worry, Bolden's quite fine. Papa ranted, but I didn't hear him. My head ached. I quickly turned from Papa to hide my vision and closed my eyes with worry. There was Zola giving birth to the pups, and then the image faded. Tonight's the night, I blurted in excitement. I quickly cupped my mouth, wishing I could take back the words. What's that supposed to mean? Papa's voice sounded scared. Tonight Zola will give birth. The pups aren't due for another week. Papa looked over at Zola, resting peacefully on the fresh golden straw of the birthing stall. She lay flat on her side, her eyes closed, her silky coated chest painted in golden hues against patches of white rose and fell gently with each breath. She's not showing any signs of labor either. What makes you think the pups are coming tonight? I edged closer to Papa and rested my chin along the mahogany slabs of the stall. I could hardly blame him for his question. Normally Zola acted much more nervous right before a birth, panting and pacing, but Zola was as calm as Zar. Could I be wrong about the pups coming tonight? In my wondering, I could hear Mama's voice. Trust, Laura, trust and I could see her heart-shaped face framed by long, dark braids. It was her kind, amber eyes I could see most. They were willing me to trust my gifts, urging me to speak up. Yet the words crawled off my tongue. I had a vision. Papa's ruddy cheeks turned white. Not another word, do you hear? I see, I see things, Tayata. I can't help it. I told you to get rid of them. Papa wagged his meaty finger at me. I tried, Tayata. You didn't try hard enough. He said, you've got to ignore them. Why should I ignore them when they can help us? Papa harumphed. Mistakes are made from decisions based on visions. I can't let that happen. Have you ever wondered how I was always the first to inform you of a litter coming or when a pup became ill in the night and needed tending? I asked. And what about the time when Snigurka got lost chasing a hare. Do you remember her found her ta who found her Tayata? Me. I've got to put my faith in the rules. It's what I know. The deeper Papa's words sunk into my thoughts, the more they poked at my heart. When it comes to the dogs, put your faith in me. There will be six or seven pups born tonight. That's something that your rules can't tell you. Papa's eyes brightened, They always, as they always did whenever a big litter was born. The Count often rewarded him with a heap of gold rubles. Not to mention my favorites, black caviar served on silver platters, sour cream brimming from crystal bowls, stacks of warm blini wrapped in linen spins from silk, and stuffed suckling pig dressed in horseradish, a symbol of abundance and fertility. To wash it all down, the Count always pulled out his finest bottles of iced champagne for a proper toast. Shh! Papa put his finger to his lips. He looked over his shoulder, and then he leaned down into me, his face so close to mine. Do you want to live a life like Rasputin? As favored as Rasputin was with the Tsar and his wife, Alexander's family feared Rasputin, had too much influence over the imperial family. There were even threats on his life. A life like that would be awful. Papa turned his attention to Zola. He twisted his long back black beard deep in thought. His gaze moved upward to the icon of the mother with child that hung above Zola for good luck. It had been hanging in that very spot for hundreds of years. 
For as long as my ancestors had been breeding the Borzoi for the Count and his family before them, Papa never stood idle for too long. He studied that icon as if the answer to all his questions hid behind the gold leaf of the painting. Zola shouldn't be left alone, I said. Papa tried to ignore me. Quick to remind him about his own rules, I added, Golden rule number three, never walk away from a Borzoi giving birth. Papa threw his arms in the air. Nobody's going to work overnight on a hunch waiting for puppies that may or may not come. I will. It was time to prove Papa wrong about my gift. Your mama needs you as does your brother, Papa said. Mama said she'll be fine. Papa frowned and his gray eyes looked as cold as a winter storm. Mama understands me, Tayatya. I thought you did too. This isn't the life I want for you, he tucked the loose strands of my hair behind my ears. As he put on on his sheepskin coat, he cleared his throat and raised one finger high into the air. I don't think the pups will night. I don't think the pups will come tonight. And to prove you wrong, I'll let you stay with Zola just this once. If the pups don't come tonight, then you're to forget about the dogs and devote your full attention to to helping your mama. Agreed? And what if the pups come? Papa took another long, hard look at Zola, resting peacefully on the straw. The pups won't come tonight, he answered. Yeah, of that I'm certain. Should a miracle occur, I'll gladly reveal the secret behind golden rule number eight. Before he could change his mind, I snatched his hand and shook it. For as much as I had begged him in the past to tell me what hid behind golden rule number eight, I could never wrench it out of him. Are we done? I have work. Papa let go of my hand, and as he hurried off, he turned to me. And almost as an afterthought, he added, if the pups come tonight, you know where to find me. A big smile came to my face. Not if, Tayatya, when. And that's the end of chapter eight.